over five million pounds. Gage. Gage with a throw then for Wimbledon. Towards Fashion U and uh, Abbott with him. Jones with the throw for the home side. Dale is up for this one. Sayers in there too. And needless to say, Fashion U. But it was won by Goff, touched on again by Hoddle. And now Winterburn. A little chip by him, and it'll uh, kick Clements' ball. If there was an offside. tradition you tend to make Spurs the favourites but there's no denying the fact of Wimbledon's quality and lost only one of their last ten games they're standing ninth in the first division and of course they have beaten Spurs at White Hart Lane in the league this season back in November by two goals to one Andy Thorne up to the header there and Jones too Gary Stevens on this side, it was almost cut out there by Glyn Hodges. Back to Big Bay Besant. And as they put it here in Wimbledon, he might well hit a ball that comes down with snow on it. Pass against Everton, those long kicks out of Dave Besant. Brought goals very quickly at the other end. Jones trying to get Wise away, and it'll be a goal kick. Brian, I think Spurs have learnt a little bit from that uh, Everton defeat. Um, I noticed that on all the long ball kicks that we've had up to yet, um, both fullbacks have tucked in very tightly on the centre backs. So if they don't, in fact, uh, Goff or Mavitt don't win the first ball, at least they're going to try and cut off the service to these three fellow strikers. Evans with a kick. Sanchez through the fashion here. That's sticking very close to him. There's Mavitt with John Fashion and Mitchell Thomas on the right. Fashion telling me yesterday that of all the defenders he's played against, he's found Mavitt just about the most difficult to beat. It'll be quite a tussle today. Vince Jones with a long throw, and Mavitt again getting above Fashionu to concede the corner. Now let's see what Wimbledon can do with this. They've got Andy Thorne and Brian Gale from the back. Fashionu will make a big nuisance of himself just in front of Clements. And Jones getting a touch to it, but not quite firm enough. Might come for Fashionu. It looked as though he'd almost kicked it out of Clements' hands and a real scare there for Tottenham. And another blow for Clements, who's certainly been in the wars already. Ron? I think we've seen there straight away Fashion who signaled into his intent. He's going for everything in his normal style and uh, as you said, Clements not going to like that after the bashing he took against the Arsenal. It was an awkward bounce on that ball that seemed to bounce away from Clements. A little fortunate there, but he found Jones with it. An all-ticket crowd of around 16,000. Mitchell Thomas with Tottenham's throw. Foul by Sanchez. Waddle. Indeed, behind it, and Waddle. Waddle chipping 
it in towards uh, Hoddle. And Hoddle, who's never even been to Plough Lane, the ground here, until he arrived this afternoon. Ozzy Ardiles. And Hoddle looks as though he might hurl a long one towards Gary Mabbott. Beaten in the air by Gale. Ardiles trying to come in. And a long ball played out by Wimbledon, but not too long even for Fashionu. Gary Stevens. Yes, some good interplay there. Poor, poor, little ball, poor ball in there, wasn't it, from Stevens? I think uh, five down would have expected better quality than that. So Hoddle with the corner. We've been spending a lot of time in training yesterday defending from Hoddle corners. Side flag against Chris Walker. Dave Besant, 28 years old, this coming Friday. And there he is. This is his copyright. A long kick forward from outside the box. Here's Laurie Sanchez. Nice little neat bit of play by our dealers, but Sanchez gets it back for Wimbledon. Stevens for Tottenham. Stevens again, and a foul off the ball there. And Ardell is arguing with Neil Mitchell. The foul by Hodges, and Fashionu coming in and having a word as well. And Hobble is the man who is holding his face for Atkinson. Brian, I think he, he might be lucky to stay on here, Hodges. Actually, he's actually cracked. Um, well, if I can interrupt for a moment, now the referee is, is having very strong words with Ozzy Ardiles, who's arguing with him, and started pointing towards the dressing room as though uh, if Ozzy continued to argue, he'd be in trouble. Sorry, go on. He'll need a little bit of, bit of diplomacy from Neil Midge here. Um, quite, he's let it go. I'm amazed. Yes, at you saw it. You saw it in the slow motion there as Hodges came in. He certainly clouted uh, Hoddle. So they haven't quite got the frantic pace that I think uh, we expected from this cup tie at the moment. Hoddle playing very much further forward in these opening minutes. Now Ardiles. Followed by Hodges, a free kick to Tottenham. Hoddle and Ardiles behind it. Getting it quickly, telling the. Uh, I think Hodges, in fact, was going on arguing with Ardiles and Hoddle, and it's so unproductive. And you can see Neil Mitchell saying, I've warned you up there, I've warned you here, and I think he's left him in no doubt as to what happens if Glyn Hodges steps out of line again. Strong action from the referee and a free kick from Hoddle, cleared by Thor. Hoddle again. deeper one this time and Kevin Gage content to put it behind for another top in the corner this time to be taken by Chris Waller here by Thorne good defensive record in fact Wimbledon unbeaten in the last five in which they conceded only two goals a foul that time by Paul Allen on John Fashion who Another free kick. Anthony Andy Thorne, who takes it. Stevens. 
I think it's very, very important for Tottenham that uh, they don't get involved in Wimbledon's way of playing. I think that would suit Wimbledon down to the ground if it was just a basking crash game. Somehow or other, Tottenham, and it's not going to be easy for them, they've got to try and impose themselves on the game and get their passing game going. Ball not outside the penalty area. I think Wimbledon so would say also, the Ron, that there's more to their game than bash and crash. Yes, I think I think what they do, they, they knock it forward very early from the back, don't they? But once once they get it forward, um, they've got players like Hodges himself when he settles down to playing that are actually good football players. Sanchez is another one. Sanchez is got a fair amount of points. Gage with a throw for Wimbledon. On the blue strip. Dennis Wise. with the throw. Spurs claiming that Gage took three or four yards too many. Paul Allen gets it back. Safety to Clements. There's the quick throw. And here's Gary Stevens. Sanchez, the long ball, there it is again, Andy Sayer after this one, but it's too far once more. And already Wimbledon now are getting into their hustling stride. No foul, referee claiming that it was a fall, a dive by Fashionu. to the right-hand side and uh, Steve Hodge on the left. Out of play, go kick. Cup tie really, one that's still finding its feet. Yes, I think, uh, as you say, I think the wind has got a fair amount to do with it. The ball's blowing out of play a lot and people can't get uh, good control of it. And I'm just interested there when you're talking about Clement and Andrew before the game, but I noticed he's tried to throw as many of the, his appearances uh, as he can. There's also, I believe, there's also Fashionu on the way towards goal again until Ardenas made his presence felt. There's also a very strong feeling that uh, Glenn Hoddle um, has played under severe pressure. Um, I think if it had been a league game, he probably wouldn't have played. Quarter of an hour gone of this sixth round FA Cup tie. Wimbledon v Spurs, and we await the first goal. Fashionu goes Ardenas. Jones when he get in the air and Fashionu on his chest delightful ball there by Fashionu for Glenn Hodges now for Wimbledon this could be a problem as Winterburn takes it up crossed in and uh, saved by Clements and a foul and in fact the referee indicated an elbow as Winterburn went in there and indeed he's given a free kick to Tottenham nice ball played in here by Fashionu Hodges now releasing Winterburn and the referee claimed there was a foul on a Spurs player. You can see him moving across there to give the free kick. Winterburn back to Dave Pesson. Chase. A handful there for golf. It's top and throw. Stopped by Gale. Knocked 
by Hoddle. Wise. Have it across there with Fashionau. Brief glimpse of the sun. Played inside here for Goff. Allen. Thomas. Hodge. And a free kick to Tottenham. Waddle. Good by Gale. Allen. And away goes Fashionu. This time he's got inside Mitchell Thomas trying to play it in towards Andy Sayer. Oh, a lovely piece of play by Goff, allowing that to run across the pair of them and to give himself the time and the space to make a force there. Metz by Brian Gale. And here's Hodges now for Wimbledon. Hodges. Running harder. Only Chris Waddle is up for Tottenham. Being joined on the far side by Paul Allen, who's made a good darting run for Tottenham. Still with Paul Allen, played in again, and back by Jones to his goalkeeper present. Tangling there with Hodge, quite accidentally. Sanchez, now for Kevin Gage, it should be Clemens's ball. Now what? Now let's see what he's got for pace. Winterburn stuck well with him. A fellow who came, started at Birmingham City, went to Oxford, and came on a free transfer from there. Stevens crossed in for Besant. He was likely at six foot four to get that sort of ball. said so often uh, only came into the league back in 1977 but as recently as 1983 they were still in the fourth division here they are ninth in the first division and bidding for a place in the FA Cup semi-finals Sanchez beating Hoddle in the air Dennis Wise playing it in towards Glyn Hodges and again the judgment of Clements was perfect and the throw with it as he finds Chris Waddle in for Ozzy Ardiles. Five Allen ahead of him and Hoddle alongside. And a ball for Winterburn. No foul there, said the referee. The long ball, Sayer chasing it. And again, Clements in the nick of time. Ardiles. Hoddle. Allen. To Clive Allen. Faced by Brian Gale, got his shot in, but it's too high. The first poke that we've had from uh, Clive Allen, the man with 40 goals, looking uh, to make it 46 before the end of the season to beat the record in a season for Spurs by Jimmy Greaves. As Brian, I would think that um, Tottenham would be fairly happy with the start. Uh, they haven't allowed Wimbledon to get a, a full head of steam, which is important in a game like this. 
and from time to time, as we've just seen there, you know, they're putting some quite promising movements. I think their midfield players, um, with, the, with the system of playing the five in the middle of the park, they always tend to have a man spare in there, and I think they've got more time than they realise, you know. I think they thought they were going to be hustled and chased and stamped on, and that really hasn't happened in midfield at the moment. Adelis with the kick, towards Goff, who'd gone forward. A long kick by Besant. Fashion is after it, and if anything, he may have been a little lucky there. It seemed to hit uh, Stevens on the back of the head, and fell obligingly to Clements. Gage back to his keeper. Clive Allen is down, but there was no foul. Bottle. Winterburn. The wind like the game at the moment, gathering pace. It really has turned into a blustery afternoon. Play there towards Sayer. Vince Jones getting in and finding little Dennis Wise. Here's Glenn Hodges, fashion you lurking in the box as well. And the whistle had gone, the flag was up. And uh, Steve Hodge, in the meantime, down and injured. The left ankle. worked up ahead of steam in the same way that they did against Everton. No, but I just wonder, thinking about that game, you know, in the early part of that game, Everton completely dominated, didn't they, the first 20 minutes or so, and looked as if they were going to have a fairly comfortable time, and then it's, they seem to build up. Got a picture there of Ray Clements' jaw. It is discoloured, and um, he said, people who are looking at me on TV today will think that I'm a little squirrel with a few nuts tucked up in there. He's actually been put to the test once or twice, hasn't he? His courage in three or four through balls. He's had to come in and uh, be first two. Well, Steve Hodge going on. Clemens with the points. Now, by Allen. No, it's not in fact. And wide of the goal by Thorn. Readjustment by Besant. Gage for Wimbledon. Sanchez offside against. Oh, the referee is saying play on. There was an offside flag up against Fashionu. Now Winterburn with uh, 25 minutes gone, no score. this side of the field now can he get the better of Gary Stevens well, twice he tried but it's a Wimbledon throw Nigel Winderburn actually poised for another run at this one Sanchez in there too Stevens. Ball out of play again for another Wimbledon throw. It's going to be such a lot of pressure this afternoon on uh, Goff and Mavitt, the centre of the Tottenham defence. There's always been uh, a question mark in certain people's minds about their ability to cope with high balls, and Clements too, for that matter. bombardment coming their way so far Ron they've handled it very well yes yeah, what they've tried to do they've tried to hold the edge of the penalty area and prevent um, uh, Wimbledon getting too close in on goal and they've done it very well as you say I think what happens in, in, in other games when you've seen uh, Tottenham play they don't defend so well against crosses from deeper positions I'll throw after all that 
Gary Stevens with it. A the space here for Paul Allen. Could have hardly made the best use of it. Ardelis just getting there before Fashion U and tangling as Ardelis fell. A clash there between Hoddle and uh, Gale. The free kick given to Wimbledon. Kevin Gage with it. Trying to get Fashion U in motion again. And the flag was up. And I think when the game stopped, the referee, in fact, going across to have a word with the linesman on the far side about something that he may have seen off the ball. is being called across to the referee and remember earlier in the game the referee had a very strict word with our dealers who was arguing a little too long about something and this clearly was the result when they both went for the ball both fell to the ground no names taken there and there was just a silly little tangle of legs as they both tried to get up certainly got the impression it wasn't worthy of a booking and there was no booking. Winterburn now. Hodge on the far side getting it away for Tottenham. And it comes through the huddle. Paul Allen playing it wide for Chris Waddle. They have some space now for him to get a run going. And Goff of all people has made the big break forward. Waddle with the shot. Besant with the save. a little bit perturbed about the way his players are standing up the Spurs players. I mean, the Spurs players were obviously expecting to get all the hustle and hassle and pressurisation, and that really hasn't happened, has it? They look as if they're getting plenty of time to play. Now, Hollow getting involved there with Dennis Wise. It hasn't been a big sort of red-blooded cut tie, and yet there have been some nasty little niggles about it haven't they yeah it seems more off the ball things when as, as i say when the ball's all the way and there's a little crack of somebody's ankle uh, ankle elbow whatever not nice here's hodge for tottenham looking to get past wise a few elbows going in there and you can see it again free kick to wimbledon well i think <laughs> Dave, one of Dave Bassett's policies is to get his own side at it, and I think he's trying to get the others at it as well. Um, that would be the exact response you'd be looking for from the Tottenham players, wouldn't it? To lose the cool, lose the composure, and perhaps do things that they're not good at. Well, Hodge and uh, Gage together being uh, spoken to by the referee. And I noticed that Vince Jones was trying to get involved as well, and Dave Bassett was very quickly his goalkeeper and then telling him to get out of the way of it. gone still no score here's Hodges for Wimbledon and an offside flag is up flying of course when the sides met back in November at White Hart Lane Laurie Sanchez was sent off and uh, Graham Roberts since moved on to uh, Glasgow Rangers he also was sent off and if memory serves me Gary Stevens dislocated a collarbone in a clash with John Fashionu it was that sort of game Besant with the kick so maybe some of the battles of November are being fought again here in Crow Lane. Here in March. Still no score in this six-round cup tie. Wimbledon Spurs. Kevin Gage then uh, with the free kick for Wimbledon. Flash news up. Uh, Jones is in there too, in a good position. Thorne also looking for a ball that might be played high across the penalty area.
towards Fashionu and Thorne, and too high for the pair of them. Waddle with the back heel. Stevens to Waddle. Well, that was always likely to end that way. And here's Hodges. Might make Tottenham pay for it. Gary Stevens with the challenge. Winterburn for Wimbledon. Jones. Wimbledon's ball. Sayer. And a goal kick. Spurs having beaten Scunthorpe, Crystal Palace and Newcastle. Joe Bobby Ross. stride now Clive Allen passing on that one it's out of play and a Wimbledon throw Trying to get it into the path of Hodge. Brought down. Oh, that looked a penalty. But the referee was perfectly placed and said no. This kind of replay is going to be very interesting now, isn't it? Well, I would think from my point of view, I don't have to make the decision. I rather think that might have been a penalty from him. Spurs still arguing with the referee while we were looking again at that slow motion. And their fans behind the goal had no doubts. What's most important of all is that referee Mitchley said no penalty. A corner for Tottenham. Hoddle with it. Floated in and gathered quite comfortably by Besant. And here come Wimbledon with Winterburn. Now Fashionu. Wimbledon throw. Winterburn, deep cross there, met by Mitchell Thomas. Five Allen. Ardiles, no, it's Laurie Sanchez instead. Now Nigel Winterburn again, Hodges. Ardiles. Over the four for Hodges. Hit from a long way out, and a goal kick to Tottenham. in the back by John Pagenaud. Kick off with uh, Tottenham's free kick. Mitchell Thomas touching it in. Out of play, a Tottenham throw. Trying to think of how Spurs player now, they're looking to try and push on what little bit of advantage they've got. They've got the best part of the, the weather, the, the wind's blowing behind them. 
if they don't make it count this half, you could see uh, Wimbledon really storming second half with the wind blowing at the backs. Off and throw. Chris Waller with it. Hodge. Going for a handball. And I certainly couldn't see that. And the referee pointing to his chest in any case. But it comes off the Wimbledon player for another Tottenham corner. Holloway will take it. Goff is at the near post. Waddle also. Five Allen is mixing it in there too. It's one for Besson to catch and he does it superbly. Makes another long, long clearance. So you can see the way the ball was caught on the wind there. And getting up more and more. And it's behind Tottenham, as Ron was saying. Behind Tottenham. In the faces of Wimbledon. Here's Dennis Wise. Gage. Offside against Sayre. And a boost for this game. He was named as the Fiat Player of the Month. supported by Gary Stevens but Sayer still got it in Greg Clements with seven clean sheets in his last nine games Header. Mitchell Thomas returning it. There's Laurie Sanchez. And the flag is up again as the Spurs back four push forward with great discipline and catch Wimbledon offside again. Adelis. Waddle. Allen. Space ahead of Paul Allen, but he couldn't really make the best use of it kick again by Dave Besant. Sayer, five minutes to half time and you can only wonder what those Besant kicks are going to be like in the second half when he's got the wind behind him. Ardell is releasing Paul Allen, he's got Huddle on this side but three, four Wimbledon defenders around him and Vince Jones finding Hodges. Wimbledon throw, Winterburn with it. Fashionu. Good ball there, played by Hodges for Sayer. Jones has made a break into the box. Wimbledon get a throw. Inside the last five minutes of the first half. Right. Who's given the other one? Actually, Brown, when he concentrates on playing, the lad Hodges has got quite a fair amount of skill, hasn't he? Quite impressive. Welsh International. Laura Sanchez. Just playing it in. Mavitt getting it away. Jones with a chance of a shot. Superbly saved by Clements. Well, if there was any doubt with the problem he's had, having had four teeth extracted and feeling very much under the weather, whether Ray Clements should have played, there was the answer. It was caught superbly by Jones. A brilliant shot and a magnificent save by the 38-year-old. Hodges again with a corner. Jones getting a useful touch there, but the whistle had gone. And the free kick taken from quite the wrong spot by Ardiles. Great piece of keeping there. 
tremendous, yes. I mean, a, a yard higher, and uh, I think that would have been the first goal. It well, obviously would have been. Um, can't help thinking, though, Brian. I mean, uh, Spurs have got away with it lightly first half. They've had a fairly, fairly easy ride. But I've got a feeling the second half can be all blood and thunder. It's going to be a test of character for the, uh, the back four and the goalkeeper second half. kick to Tottenham. Ardenius hitting it from a long way out. A speculable shot. I think he must have been reading comics there. <laughs> to release the ball. The uh, referee will simply add on time. And the coaches there we are going to get on with it. Very pleasant, I must say. I don't mind him saying he's been an ever-present in this Little inside for something like six seasons. When you talk about the side costing £185,000, when he came from one week Edgware Town, he cost a mere £1,000. He's got to be one of the best buys in the first division. Hodge, Ardenas. Last minute of the first half now as Dale backtracks. And does well to outfit Glenn Hoddle and then gives it away to Paul Allen. Your reflections on the first half, Ron? Yes, I think Spurs have uh, had most of the control and yet I think they'll be disappointed they haven't given themselves more goal scoring situations. They haven't really created much um, and I think they could, you know, that could be costly for them in the second half. Flag up for offside. Wimbledon themselves haven't um, haven't played in their usual manner, but I wonder how much of that is to do with, condi with the sort of conditions, the wind, and so forth. Spurs, no doubt, and their fans will still be debating whether or not Steve Hodge was pulled down by Dave Besson. He thought may have been a penalty, but the referee decided was not. Ardiles, Hoddle towards Waddle, but Winterburn did well there. Hodges, a nice little play by him. The ball is in the touch once more for another Tottenham throw. And it's been the first half of fits and starts. Allen. And that might fall for Clive Allen. He was charged off the ball there fairly, according to the referee. By Brian Dale. Long, decent clearance again. Both Sayer and Fashion who went for that. Ardiles. Into the path of Goff, who's made one or two quite interesting sorties forward. And uh, a foul on the Tottenham captain gives them a free kick in the last seconds of the first half. Chris Waddle. Goff forward again, policed that time by Sanchez, cleared by Fawn. Chris Waddle, Gary Stevens, referee looking at both linesmen to confirm that the half time whistle is about to blow. And as Hoddle plays it wide of the goal, and Besson complaining that the cover wasn't quite good enough. Nearly two minutes of time added on at the end of the first half. And there goes the half-time whistle. Six-round FA Cup tie between Wimbledon and Spurs. Goal is after 45 minutes. Be interesting to see what uh, Jimmy Greaves and Ian St. John have to say. And that comes up, of course, immediately after the break. 